Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Rick House with Whiskey Culture. We're here in Houston, Texas at Yellow Rose Distilling. Let's see what makes them so unique. Let's get started. Whiskey is defined as a spirit made from malted grain, but we know it's so much more than that. Whiskey is passion. It's our history and it's our community. Join us as we explore what it means to be a part of the whiskey culture. Yellow Rose Distillery has history. It was named after Texas folklore. A woman named the Yellow Rose of Texas helped Sam Houston win Texas's battle for independence. And it's with that same spirit of rebellion and independence that Yellow Rose crafts their whiskey. As Houston's first legal distillery, they've been churning out Texas whiskey for over a decade. It's a distillery full of local love and local pride and is a staple in Houston. So we are here in the Yellow Rose Rick House. It is wall to wall packed with barrels. It is incredible. And Houston, you are overseeing all of this, is that right? Yeah, I seem to spend a lot of days here and you know, sometimes it comes down to bringing in the new barrels that we just filled from our distillery, which is a couple miles away, to popping open barrels, giving a taste, sampling them out, and really deciding what's gonna go into the next blend. All that done, is done right here. Awesome, so I mean, what what is a typical day for you? Because I mean, this is all a bit overwhelming. I mean, when we walked in, we were just absolutely blown away. I mean, this is just an, a, a massive, massive amount of barrels. Yeah, I mean, I would say that no day is typical. Uh, I'll come in and it really depends on what we need. Sometimes we need to build that batch. Sometimes we do have those freshly filled barrels. Sometimes we just need to make sure that our barrels are aging the right way. And so my day could consist of physically getting in there with gloves and getting dirty to just filling little tiny sample bottles and all that. But you guys are coming here at a really kind of nice temperate time. It's kind of cool outside, the humidity is down low. You guys should come back in the summertime because you can smell this place outside the doors <laughs> right before you walk in. Uh, you got to get used to this high proof environment, really. I mean, it was pretty funny. We uh, we walked in and, and we could immediately smell and we were like, hey, if we if we use the equipment here, the camera equipment, or is it just gonna, <laughs> are we all going to blow up? Oh, or? yeah, we, we definitely need to get ventilation out there. But yeah, we do get a lot of saturation in here. It's, our, it's part of our, our humidity and our heat. We just we have that year round. And so the angels just keep pulling more whiskey, more water, all that. We get tons of ev evaporation right here. And you can really, you know, tangibly experience that rather than just you know, talk about it. You're creating all of these, these blends and all of these things. What's it like to have to pick from each of these barrels and kind of create all of these, these different expressions that you all are releasing? Yeah, so when it comes down to just making that final blend, we're at this point in our company where we're still trying to define what that flavor is for that certain product. Like Outlaw has been in small barrels to bigger to barrels, bigger to barrels, longer aging time, all that. And so we're really still trying to figure out what is Outlaw going to be in the future. And so each time we build a batch is going to be, is this one better or about the same as the last one? Harris County, brand new product that we just released this year. It's a high rye bourbon mash bill. And we, I'm kind of in, in a hole because I made some really, really good batches going forward. And so it's been very well received and I, I had to keep that legacy going. And so as our product continues to age longer and longer, just building those batches is going to take a different process. So I, I usually like to identify barrels kind of musically. Think about it like a chord, bass notes, mid notes, treble notes, and seeing how they all kind of come together. Because if it's slanted too far one way or the other, it's not going to really have that harmony. I really love that you're, you're comparing the aging and blending process of whiskey to music because, you know, whiskey is, you, you'll have some people say whiskey's an art. You'll have some other people say whiskey's a science. And, and it is to both of them. It, sure. it is an art and a science. And there's science and art and art and science. And it's the same thing with music, you know, the harmonics oh, that you're yeah. talking about. There, there's the same thing. There's the, the art of, of the harmonic and, you know, uh, the art of sound. And then there's the science behind it as well. What we feel, what we hear, how we interpret things. And so um, I think that's a really good analogy between, you know, trying to create a symphony of whiskey in a blend 
and, and yeah. combining that art and that science to really make something that's unique and well received. Yeah, any amateur guitar player like myself will know what it sounds like when that that, that string is just slightly off tune. Yeah. And so our barrels, as they just kind of cycle in and out of the year, they'll hit their peaks, they'll hit their lows throughout time. And you just really kind of figure out how each individual barrel, like a note, like a string, is getting tuned the right way. And you just have to catch it at the right moment, not let it go too far. It's clear that Houston has a deep love and appreciation for the whiskey that he's crafting. The time and care he takes and making sure that Yellow Rose's whiskey meets his rigid expectations is a sign of good things to come. He took us back to the barrel room so that we could see where the whiskey is aging and taste different barrels at different stages in their maturation journey. So what do we have here? So this, and I'm surrounded by uh, a barrel of our three-year-old high rye bourbon mash bill, Harris County straight bourbon whiskey. Uh, we just released it last year, and uh, it's been flying out of our warehouses. We're just, we can hardly keep up with the demand of it. I'm very proud of how this has, has turned out. Uh, it's a recipe that originated with, with some experimentations that I was able to do about four years ago. And we shipped out samples to a lot of our fans, and they said, we like this one, and also this one. And this one actually got the second choice, but it fits in with our portfolio and fits in with kind of what we do here at Yellow Rose. All Texas grown grains, all heat and humidity in Houston influence. It's, it, it's really you know, indicative of what we can do here. Awesome. And so you were saying that this actually is entered at a lower proof. Obviously that allows the flavors to, to mature in a different way inside the barrel. But you were saying that because of where you're located in Texas, yeah. it doesn't really shift much. Right, and so we put in at a pretty low proof, and what that does is it allows us to have access to the more water-soluble flavors that are trapped inside the barrel. Uh, we extract those, and those are those ones that we just perceive as being more kind of sweet, uh, like coconut, like vanilla. Uh, there's also a lot of ethanol-soluble flavors too, and those are usually more towards the tannic, spicy, bitter end. Uh, and I wanted to find the balance of that because I was already going to get a lot of spice from the rye content, the high rye content. And so I think we really found that good middle ground. But yeah, you're right. Uh, here in Houston, it's hot, it's humid basically all year long. And so we lose water and alcohol at more or less the same rate for all of our whiskeys that we age here. So we put in at 104, 114 for the outlaw, for example, and it really doesn't shift too much from that. It might be within like one or two in, in uh, proof points in either direction, but it mostly stays pretty flat. And that's pretty unique for Texas, uh, especially because the state is so large. You guys are almost at an equilibrium point for that, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, Texas is huge. There's a lot of dry climates. There's a lot, it, it's warm everywhere, right? But it's still, that humidity factor is pretty different. The weather factor is different. We don't get a lot of snow here like they do up in the panhandle. Uh, we get the hurricanes, we get the, the tropical weather. And so, the barrels really do just mature differently. And uh, I don't think it be, can be imitated anywhere else in the world outside of maybe like India or <laughs> the Caribbean. <laughs> well, let's give it a shot. Yellow Rose's barrel warehouse is exceptional. It's great that such a significantly sized operation is still taking the time to experiment and try new things. But at the end of the day, the whiskey inside the barrel is what will eventually make its way into the hands of whiskey enthusiasts around the world. So, we figured we'd better give it a shot. They were kind enough to crack open some barrels for us to taste through. Let's check it out. Cheers. Buenos niños. Oh man, I mean, it's just such a, such a beautiful nose on that. It's so, it's, it's got such a deep caramel and this toasty earthy note to it. Yeah. I mean, I can't believe how developed the nose is at three years. And that's, that's something that's, it's really unique to Texas is the, the amount of character and aroma that you get after such a short time is just incredible. I mean, flavors are, are developed. There's this really good toast note to a lot of this stuff. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. And what you've got here is just an absolute, I mean, it's just, uh, a, a huge amount of, of nose for such a young aged whiskey. Oh, for sure. And, and this is coming out not at an extremely high proof, but you are getting a lot of that characteristic coming out aromatically. 
And I think a lot of our development is not so much from the myth that it ages faster in Texas. It ages differently. So we lose a lot to evaporation. We, over the course of this barrel, uh, we'll probably lose 30% of the entire whiskey in three years. That's a lot. And so that gives us a lot of room for the oxidation reactions to happen. So we yeah. have a lot of flavor development, flavor creation in that way. Mellows it out a little bit too. Three years, yeah. Proof oh, is in the taste. I wish you could get a scented candle of this. <laughs> <laughs> Soap. Mm. That is just, I mean, the, the character on that. If I, if I were to have blind tasted that, there's no way, no way I would have guessed three years. That, I mean, the amount of maturation that you have in this whiskey in such a short time is, is unbelievable. I mean, this is an absolute flavor bomb and it's got a really nice balance of those sweet and deep caramel characteristics. Uh, there's a good amount of oak on it, but it's not too much. And it's got, it's that nice like vanilla spiced oak profile. I mean, this yep. has just got, it, it's it's sweet, it's earthy, it's oaky. I mean, there's a, there's a great, like you were saying earlier, a symphony of flavors that are coming through in this. And I mean, it's, it's just excellent. Right, every step of this process was done very thoughtfully and mindfully. We wanted the right mash bill, we wanted the right Texas grains, we wanted the right barrel proof, the right barrel, the right char, we wanted all of that to really make and, and harmonize with that, that best final release that we could do. I mean, good job. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Not only do they have some great whiskey, but they've created a beautiful space for people to enjoy it in. Yellow Rose seems to be a bit of a community hub with a nice and inviting atmosphere where people can kick back relax and have a good drink. So we got to go out to the warehouse. We got to try a whole bunch of barrels. I mean, the, the stuff that you all are putting out is excellent, but w what is it like being here at Yellow Rose day to day? And, and what, what does it entail running an operation of this size? I mean, it's a very interesting and sort of complicated challenge. Um, you know, I think it, it always seems simple when we're just making bottles or we're just looking at inventory, but a lot of this stuff is, uh, you know, getting up the crystal ball and thinking like, okay, in five years, what are we going to need? Um, what do we need to be developing now? What's going to be, you know, relevant or like new in the future that we need to get in on? So, I mean, we do something like uh, 30 different R&D research barrels pretty much simultaneously all the time. And I would say, you know, from that, we've selected like one or two projects we think are really good. So we have very high standards for ourselves. and. There's a lot of time on the uh, computer, time on the spreadsheet, and then also there's a lot of time going out to market and getting feedback based on what we put out there and what people think about it and bringing that information back um, to the teams. Like, okay, how do we do stuff better? How do we improve the product and keep that sort of cycle moving forward? Yeah, and I, I think one of the things that you touched on that's really important is, um, I mean, we've talked about it a few times, but people just don't really realize how important it is to understand the fact that when you're distilling something, you're not distilling it for tomorrow or next week or a month, you're distilling it for years down the road. And, it, and that, you know, people say, well, why don't they just make more whiskey? Or why don't you just do that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and they don't realize, you know, some of the stuff that you all are making, some of it's three years old, some of it's in there for six, you know, years, coming up on six years. And so you gotta think, you have to think, how much am I gonna distill? for this time without you know waste, what's demand gonna be? And not just that, but what are people gonna be into three years from now? Like we're seeing a, you know, a surge of, of uh, American pot still whiskey. No one would have seen that coming. So like, how would you have known to create something like that you know, five, six years ago, unless you were lucky? Yeah, and I think a lot of it comes down to sort of brand ethos. What is your brand about? What do you wanna be? So you know, like, you know we run with a pot still. Um, it's always going to be a part of a core ethos of our brand. Um, but you know, like as we're expanding, we realize like, hey, you know what we want to do is we want to bring in the calm as well. Um, we want to make more of the things that we buy right now from Kentucky or Indiana and actually make them here in Texas and really have full control of all of our products. And it's just something that takes time. So, you know, like to get to the point where you can, as a business, afford to operate at that scale, you know, like we actually have to get to that point in sales first to justify all of that and then you know, you can kind of back end it all in, but even that takes a long time. And I think, you know, there are some things you just get lucky on, you know. Yeah. Pot stills, I think by nature of, you know, just how craft distillers have to start and the money they have to get started with usually, they were a natural choice because they're less expensive, they're more rudimentary, they're easier to learn and to run. 
um, and they work on a batch principle rather than a continuous principle. When you work on a batch principle, you get to attack it a day at a time. And that's good and bad. There's a lot of fluctuation, but there's also a huge opportunity to keep improving, right? It's not just like there's a stream and the stream just goes and goes and goes and never, ever, ever stops. Um, so I think that's for us, you know, we've been kind of, we've been lucky, you know, I think we're also enjoying the surge in popularity and recognition of Texas whiskey, yeah. generally speaking. And it's something that we're actively participating in with our Texas Whiskey Association to help build that image. You know, Texas distillers, I feel like are fairly unique in that, you know, um, we all get along and like each other. Uh, I've worked in distillation in other states and it's, it's usually more, a little bit more um, frenemy or, you know, yeah. like, my comp you enemy, it's like, you know, you all get along for the sake of getting along when it's really important, but in terms of like your day to day, you know, there's um, a lot of rivalry and you know, this is not an industry free of ego. Um, but you know, I think Texas is, um, it's a very unique place in the sense that like, you know, a, it's big enough for all of us, we kind of have the feeling. And also we all see the rising tide, basically. It's like, you know, we all want to make this thing work together because it helps all of us a lot, a lot more than it helps to fight each other. Yellow Rose is constantly in a state of motion. The team is managing a delicate balance between marketing, production, and distribution. Their bottling line was in full swing when we stopped by, and they were producing cases and cases of Yellow Rose for distribution internationally. Each bottle is the culmination of a lot of care, time, and effort before the final leg of their journey, and it's clear that each of those team members share a certain gravity in their view, and understanding that this is a project of passion and love as much as it is a business endeavor. And that's how you want it to be though. You want there to be a unified understanding and effort towards a common goal. That's when you start to pool individual passions into a singular group passion that's greater than the sum of its parts. The two products we have up here is we have our, our Outlaw Bourbon. This is our 100% Texas Yellow Dent Corn. This is our first product here in the brand. Um, it's kind of always been the centerpiece of Yellow Rose. And then we have basically our newest addition to the lineup, which is our Harris County Bourbon. This is our high rise style that we got that nice Texas shot of, um, or you did, I should say. <laughs> um, and this is the one, it's like, you know, this is the one for us right now we're really excited about, very proud of. You know, we spent basically five years between when we started this project as R&D and where it is today, kind of just reaching kind of into market. And they're two very, very different bourbons. This is very traditional mash bill. This is very much kind of that craft niche. You know, there's maybe only about four or five bourbons out there in the market today that are 100% corn. Yeah. Very Several very of them are made in Texas. Yeah. It's kind of a theme for us. Um, but you know, Texas Yellow Dent Corn, um, this bottle right here is about, you know, not quite straight, but it'll be straight this year. So because it was that first product and it kind of took off on us, constantly having this battle of production versus quality versus putting stuff into market. So the sacrifice that the business had to make early on was we filled a lot of really small barrels. Yeah. Really small barrels can impart a lot of maturation to the whiskey very quickly. In, there are sacrifices to my mind in quality of the liquid. So that's something that we have chosen now to move to full format barrel so that we can maximize the quality of the liquid that we create. But, and uh, you know, we've kind of just gotten to the point now where this is coming around. We're starting to see this. This year it'll finally be a, a straight bourbon whiskey just as our Harris County is. Yeah, and I, I have to say the difference between these two, I mean, they're, they're both amazing at, at the time that they've been aged, but that, I mean, we, we got to try this right out of the barrel, the Harris County, and it's, I mean, it's unbelievable. So, I mean, it's crazy that it started five years ago as an R&D project, just something that you guys arbitrarily thought, what if we did, you know, what if we tried it? And it, and it came out into something that is just, I mean, so incredible. It, it's such a, a, a great whiskey and it's, it's great to see how you guys are expanding your, you know, your lines and, and doing all of these R&D projects and all of these experimental barrels, because it, it, that's really where all the trailblazing happens, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's where we start to see these craft distilleries and we start to see just, uh, you know, they're pushing into new frontiers. And, and this is how a lot of the stuff that becomes really popular was made, you know, the cognac finishes and the, all these things that 
that large distilleries never tried because they've got so many moving parts. It's people like you all that are doing these R&D projects that have trailblazed into some of the biggest trends that we're experiencing now. Right. Yeah, and I mean, I think that we got kind of lucky on Harris to be sure. And I think it was also just one of those, we could sort of see five years ago, like, okay, Outlaw is doing well, but we're also getting the feedback from the market. It's like, it's a, a love it or leave it kind of situation for a lot of bourbon people. They're like they were either really, really into it or they're like, no, nah, that's not bourbon because it's 100% corn. Yeah. It is obviously uh, by definition, by everything that makes bourbon bourbon, but you know, the taste profile wasn't there for everybody. So I think we came to a high rock is like, well, you know, let's go back to basics a little bit. You know, basically three classic rye mash bills. We did high rye and then your sort of classic high corn, low rye, sort of Kentucky, Tennessee bourbon. We didn't want to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, I think for us, we kind of steered away from the weeded because we wanted something that was a little bit more expressive. You know, I think the number one thing about Texas whiskeys is they're bold. So we want to do something that was bold as well. Well, I mean, it's it's definitely bold in the fact that it's a flavor bomb, but it, it's interesting. I mean, it wears its proof well. It's got a ton of flavor to it. The nose is excellent. And, you know, creating something that's bold, but not overpowering is, is how I explain it to somebody. I mean, you kind of got to try it to to understand it because it's it's got a lot of flavor. It's got a good backbone to it. It is it is bold, but it's not it's not unapproachable. It's extremely approachable. It's not too hot. It's but it's got a good, you know, kick to it. But it's, I mean, it, it is a really nice blend of, of things to create a unique experience. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's why we're so, I mean, it's one of those, like you put it out there and you always hope for the best. Yeah. And then when the reception comes back better than you anticipated, you're like, well, we knocked that one out of the park, boys, good work. Um, you know, we can't expect that every time. And I think that's why, you know, why do we have 30 R&D projects? Well, because I expect a lot of them to be just kind of so-so. And, you know, so-so doesn't win, doesn't do you any favors in the market. Yeah. Um, you know, in the taste room, they're great. And that's kind of where a lot of them will end up living at some point when they're, when we think they're done and ready. It's like, cool. For all those people who really love us, who take the time and effort to come out and see us here and really have a one-on-one -on -one experience, like, hey, we have something special you can only get here. But in terms of those new projects we'll take out to the broader market, it's, it's tough pickings and you know, we don't want to put too many things out there. We try to have a pretty straightforward and understandable pro portfolio. You know, there's um, certain distilleries I won't mention who have 20 plus SKUs and my goodness to try to think about like, how do you fully understand the ease of this brand and everything that they do? It's, it's tricky and we try like, well, let's just be focused. We're, we're whiskey people. We're just going to do whiskeys. We'll kind of do a, a classic profile. We'll have a, we'll have a premium American, our blended. You know, we have a blended because what's the most popular whiskey in Texas by sales? It's Crown Royale. So you don't fight that trend, you know, in Texas where we are. It's like you, you ride the wave, right? Yeah. So we make a product to compete with Crown. Uh, and, you know, this is your, your whiskey you put with your Coke. Yeah. And then, you know, we have a rye and two bourbons that we're extremely proud of. And, you know, we've been very lucky in their, their reception and awards and other things. Thank you all for joining us for another episode of the Rick House with Whiskey Culture. Thank you all for having us here. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much. So how can our viewers follow you all? Uh, they can follow us on our social media, Instagram, Facebook, or follow, find us on our website, yellrosedistilling.com. Awesome. And you can follow Whiskey Culture on YouTube and all major social medias so you don't miss another episode of the Rick House. I'm Greg, your host. Thank you for joining us and cheers. Thank you for spending time with us down here at the Rick House brought to you by Whiskey Culture. This show wouldn't be possible without your dedication to the whiskey community and continued support. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to learn more about the world of whiskey.